Hey guys, this is Shalina. Welcome back to another video. As you can tell from the title, this is going to be a quick review on the new King Arthur movie that just came out. This video might have a few spoilers. I don't know how much I will be revealing. Um, I mean, most people know what the story of King Arthur and Excalibur is, so... So I watched the movie at a pre-screening on May 8th, I think it was, with my family and my friend Michaela and a couple of our other family friends who were like super excited to watch it, got them tickets. As a whole, I liked how this King Arthur movie did a different spin on the whole Camelot story. Uther and his wife were killed by his brother and that left Arthur as an orphan. He got away from him and grew up in a brothel. Um, the relationships between each character was really believable and relatable. I think that most, if not all, the characters were really well developed in my opinion because it was just like, it wasn't some slapstick humor thrown in. There was a lot of funny moments that like just help alleviate a lot of the tension and the drama. Um, each character uh, I think had something to draw from Arthur and he had a, something to draw from them. No one was there just because, like, they all had an important part in the story. So that was that was a good, good thing because a lot of plots just run dry because of random characters that aren't needed. Uh, you definitely probably don't have the same opinion as me, and if you do, that's awesome. But that's just my take on it. Expanding more on that, like, the characters are really well developed. So whenever someone did die, and that is quite a lot of people, well, uh, yeah, a lot of people did die, but whenever a character died, you felt it and it wasn't like whatever because they developed them enough and like shown them enough that you would not not care about it. I loved uh, everyone that was on cast. I loved Charlie Hunnam and uh, Katie McGrath and Eric Piana and everybody else. The, King Arthur movie sort of showed uh, different sides to certain actors that I know because of uh, just certain genres that they're usually typecasted in. One particular actor that I actually enjoyed watching was Eric Bana and his performance almost made me forget how bad the Hulk was. And also Charlie Hunnam because my child. Can we talk about David Beckham though? Can we? Because David Beckham was like the best part of the entire movie. Okay, no, I kid. He wasn't the best part, but he was definitely like, it was like a Stan Lee cameo in a Marvel movie. Just like, but like 20 times better because I don't think I remember ever seeing him come up in any news unless I was just totally out of it, like living under a rock for the past couple months. His scene was so fucking enjoyable and me and Michaela were like, sit, we sat right next to each other. We like squealed because I was like, I think they did put a prosthetic on him. I don't quite remember. It was like a comic relief that was nicely put because it was all dramatic building up to the part where Arthur pulls out the sword and the stone and it, it was just, it was done well. Going back to what I said about like other uh, Camelot stories like BBC's Merlin, can we talk about Katie McGrath? Because when I found out that she was in this movie, I was just like, hey yo, like I, got you. If you've never seen BBC's Merlin, it has Katie McGrath playing Morgana, uh, Arthur's stepsister, half-sister, stepsister, uh, uh, like it was a, it was a cool thing seeing her in it because she like stuck with, um, being like in the Arthurian area. Um, I just wish her character, she was the wife to uh, Uther's brother was played by Jude Law and whose character's name I slips my mind but she did indeed get sacrificed for power because he was power hungry and wanted a kingdom to himself and so that was basically just it. She had little to no effect to the story aside from being something to advance the plot and I just wish her character had more depth and was written into it a little bit more, had more interactions because I feel like uh, it was just something missing. Um, like you understood that she was killed because he needed something, but that part I remember during the movie was a little bit uh, 
confusing because you didn't quite know what was happening in that time because he was dragging her corpse around the castle and ringing the bell under the... It was just really weird. Uh, like, you don't understand that part until later on, like the run, the second time it happens with the other daughter and... I don't know, maybe I just like was too awed by the movie and how fast it was going to really like grasp everything that was happening. That could have just been me. So the music score and the soundtrack uh, were really good. It really set the mood to the entire movie and all the scenes coming up with it. I really love the songs because as I said, it did set the mood for everything perfectly. The CGI was good really. Um, there wasn't a lot of... It was a lot of slow motion stuff, which was really cool. And um, like again, the CGI was well made. It wasn't like overused, like how some movies are. They just want CGI to everything. And there was a lot of things that, um, like the subtle things, like having, th like are the important parts, like the sword, whenever Arthur would grasp it with both hands, like his eyes would go blue and this, it would glow and it was just really cool. I love that part, those parts of the movies. Like I really enjoyed the hand-to-hand -hand combat and the sword fighting and the archery that was involved and it was just so cool to go back to that because nowadays a lot of the action movies are like guns and other shit and I'm just like, after Baby Driver I was like, ooh, that's enough for a little bit. So Arthur was having uh, recurring nightmares about the scene that happened uh, when he was a kid and his parents were both killed um, so he was like repressing all these nightmares and, and he didn't see everything that he needed to see so they just keep coming back it wasn't until later on where he forced himself and willed himself to look past that and watch what really happened between his uncle and his father Uther had was dying obviously and so what he did was embed the sword into his spine and let himself turn, be turned to stone and fall into the lake so that uh, his brother couldn't get the sword and gain power. Um, it was like bittersweet to see that because he sacrificed himself to make sure that someday uh, his son would take back the kingdom. But what got me was he turned to stone. He was the stone that the sword was embedded in and he was the stone that Arthur pulled the sword out of and no one knew that until the very end that it was super weird to me just because of how they did that. It was cool and the second time around when Arthur saw that he grasped the stone before he his father was killed and had like eye contact and it was uh, yeah. Another thing I want to take a nod to is how this movie that could have had a love story, didn't have a love story. Um, it, uh, like going back, Arthur and Guinevere were like a high points of like everything with Camelot and they didn't put her in there from what I remember. Like she wasn't introduced at all because it would like hold back the story. There was a little bit of something happening between Arthur and the mage, but it was mostly like subtext and just slight banter every once in a while um if anything he just like cared grew to care for her and there was really no love story which i loved <laughs> ironically love story uh as a subplot would have taken the time used that explained stories and did flashbacks and all of that which i'm glad they didn't do because not every freaking movie needs a love story. Like, action movies are fun by themselves. You don't need some weird drama or anything to like backhand them, whatever. King Arthur Legend of Sword is a prime example of when love stories are not needed, ever. This may be where I will end this video. I don't have anything else that I could remember off the top of my head now. So to recap this entire review, I just loved it. Like all together as a whole i enjoyed it i want to go back and watch it again i would rate this movie a 9.5 out of 10 only because of like, certain aspects could have been better with story and characters being used and stuff like i mentioned before 
but I'm giving it such a high rating because of how much I loved it and how much I fangirled throughout the entire movie. Like, no joke. Me and Michaela were, like, crying. Like, <laughs> oh my god. It was beautiful. And the shots were so good. Like, nothing... Uh, like, I would have to go watch it again and maybe decide if I'm that biased. But I just love Guy Ritchie movies. And I love Charlie Hunnam. And, oh my god goodness everyone was so good i'm just gonna stop this here so give a like to this video if you enjoyed it and if you have watched king arthur comment down below on what was your favorite part or maybe suggest a movie you want me to review in the future link down below is also my patreon that i just recently started so go ahead and support me on that so yeah that's the end of the video do what you will and i'll see you guys in the next one Videos have been coming a little slow lately. Um, the ones that did come out the past couple weeks have just been things that were pre-recorded or in sch schedule and everything, so that's out. I don't know why I'm gonna be doing more bookish stuff because I've sort of fallen off of like the TBRs wraps up wrap ups. Um, I don't think I ever uploaded the one from April. Did I? Who knows? It's probably somewhere on my computer. But there will be a new. Um, book haul video coming up because I did buy a bunch of stuff from Target and got a lot of things from like dollar stores so that's fun